Assalamu alaikum. Inshallah, you guys are well. So today we're going to talk about the group exercise at the assessment center. Now you may be thinking, what is the group exercise? Well, pre-COVID, right, you would have gone to the offices to do your assessment center. And as part of the group exercise, they would have got all the candidates together and set you around a table in a meeting room and given you a made up scenario. And as part of that, you would have had to work as part of a team, communicate effectively with each other, show off your time management and organization skills, delegation, decisiveness. So it's basically an opportunity for the firm or company to assess you in a team environment and see how you compete against each other. So each firm or company will have its own group exercise that you have to perform. And examples that I've seen in the past include a situation where you may have a very complex object outside the meeting room and each member of the team is given maybe a couple of views each and you have to go and look at the object and then come back and draw the object as a team. Another example I've seen is that they will make up a business and they will give you certain information about this business and the business may have an objective, right? They may want to grow or increase revenue, increase profit, and they'll give you different scenarios that they could follow. And there'll be information associated with each scenario and you've got to discuss the pros and cons. Linked to that, you may also get a group exercise where you have a business with lots of information and you have to talk about what services you can provide. And that example is going to be more common in practice because these firms will provide services such as audit, accounting, tax, corporate finance to clients. So this is where your research is tested, right? Do you know about the organization that you've applied for? Are you able to talk effectively about their services? Are you able to weigh up the pros and cons of each service? So these are just some of the examples that may come up. I've got to stress, these are some of the examples that I've seen in the past, but it can be very different. Right, so I don't want you to think that it will be only one of these situations that will come up. It may be something different that I haven't spoken about. Now that's all pre-COVID. So your assessment centers will be held virtually. And the first thing that comes up is, will they actually hold a group exercise? If you think about it, it could take quite a bit of time to arrange and it's very difficult to do virtually. Normally they can assess you in person, but in my opinion, I think it will definitely come up. And there are a few reasons from that from an assessor's perspective. So if you think about all the other tasks you do, they're pretty much one on one, right? Numerical, case study, interview, and it can be quite difficult to differentiate between candidates. So if you think about it in the numerical, there's probably a standard pass mark, right? 70%. How do you differentiate between someone who's got 85% and someone who's got 90%, right? It may be difficult. In the partner interview, what if one person knows more about the company, but doesn't do as well on the competency side. And then you compare them against the candidate who's vice versa. They haven't done well on the business side, but they've done well on the competency side. It's difficult to compare. In the case study, what if two candidates focus on different points, right? And they're both valid. How can you differentiate? It's very difficult. That's why a lot of firms or companies will use the group task to differentiate between candidates. And it's a way of catching candidates out as well because your competencies that you've been asked about in the partner interview, you know, effective communication, organization, time management, working as part of a team, those will be tested in the group exercise. So if I'm an assessor and you've said to me, you know, you've got great team working skills in the interview, I'm gonna think, okay, this guy's great. I can't validate what you're saying, so I'm gonna have to take it on face value. But then I can see you in the group exercise. And if you're someone who completely falls apart, that's not going to look good. Right? I'm going to be thinking as an assessor, where's all those teamwork skills that he was talking about or she was talking about in the interview? They've suddenly disappeared. So not only is it an important exercise from an assessor's perspective because it helps us to differentiate between candidates, but it's also important from your perspective because... This is one of the few exercises where you can recover, right? So say you don't do as well in the interview uh, or case study or numerical, you could potentially recover that in the group exercise because as part of the workplace, you'll be working in a team. So if you can show that you can work effectively as part of a team, you do really well in the group exercise, you may recover from other areas where you haven't done as well. If we flip it the other way around, if you don't do well in the group exercise, 
then it will be very difficult to recover in the other tasks. So inshallah, I've stressed how important this is. And what I will say, guys, is I get a lot of people messaging me who struggle at the group exercise. Why? Because it's the most difficult task to prepare for. You know, for question practice, you can look online. You'll find questions that have been asked in the past. You can prepare the answers, right? Even if the group exercise is published online, how do you prepare for it? You don't know who's going to turn up at the assessment center, right? It's very tough, so people struggle with it. So inshallah, I'm going to go through some of the core skills that are being tested as part of the group exercise to help you guys secure that offer. But what I will say, it's difficult for me to say exactly what to do or what to say because I don't know what task is going to come up as part of your group exercise. So it's going to be very difficult to say. But inshallah, we will cover off the core skills. Guys, before we go into the detail, if you haven't subscribed already, please do subscribe, like the videos and share the channel with others. I really appreciate your support. So the first thing I'm going to say is don't underestimate your competition. So it doesn't matter whether you're a school leaver, applying for a placement, internship or even a grad job you may find that you are grouped together as part of the assessment center. So don't think, oh, I'm a school leaver, I'm only going to be with other school leavers. That may not be the case, right? I had a situation where when I was applying for PwC, I was paired up with a graduate and an intern. Especially if you're a school leaver, you may find it a bit intimidating if you're paired up with graduates and people who are applying for placements because they're not only older than you potentially, but more experienced as well. So that experience can be quite daunting. But what I will say is don't let that come into play, right? It doesn't matter if the other person has a degree from Oxford or Cambridge. That does not matter. You are there to secure that job offer, right? And you're going to do that by showing you're the best candidate for that role. I know you may not be directly competing with the grad because they're applying for a grad scheme and you're applying for a school leaver scheme. But still, don't let that come into play because you still got to show you are the strongest candidate in that team. OK, so I don't want you guys saying oh, I've got to be respectful. Maybe let the person with the degree speak first. No, everyone wants to secure a job offer. So do what's in your best interest. Don't underestimate the competition. Secondly, make sure you speak. Now, that sounds really obvious. Fazan, of course, I'm going to speak. I'm not going to stay quiet. But remember, you haven't done this before. This might be your first experience. So you might just be taken aback by the scenario, all the information you've got to absorb. Five, ten minutes in, you find out actually everyone else has spoken and I haven't spoken. So it's very important you speak regularly, right? You don't have to be speaking all the time or be the loudest person because that may not look positive on you, right? It may not go your way. But definitely speak regularly and make sure you're adding value. Don't be repeating points that others have said or just be saying, yep, yeah, I agree with that. Or that's a good point, right? You're not adding value. How can you add value? By improving on the point that the person has said before, right? So Jack, that's a really good point, but I think we can improve that by doing X, Y, Z, right? That's a good way of adding value to what someone has suggested. In other words, a statement like that also means your idea is rubbish and here's how we can do better. OK, so you can start seeing how people say certain things because they're in it for themselves. And you've got to start playing that game as well. Another example I'll give you. Say if someone's really quiet, and I've mentioned this in one of my earlier videos. Say if someone's really quiet, one of the ways to make yourself look good is by inviting that person into the conversation. Right. It shows that you're interested in their viewpoint. But another way of looking at it is you're talking well about yourself, making yourself look good. But then you're making that person look rubbish as well, because then the assessor recognizes, well, they haven't even spoke. It took Fazan to bring them into the conversation. One point for Fazan, minus one point for the other candidate. So you can start seeing how these sort of mind games are played, right? How it's everyone making themselves look good. And they don't care if they make others look bad. So remember, don't underestimate your competition and make sure you're speaking regularly because you want to stand out for the right reasons. So those are just some of the tactics you could employ. So at this stage, you're probably thinking everything sounds quite cutthroat, right? People making themselves look good, taking slide digs at other people. But remember, whilst you're doing this slyly behind the scenes, you've got to still show off your interpersonal skills that you can communicate effectively. And you do that by adding that personal touch. 
So make sure you know the names of everyone that's uh, in the assessment center or the group exercise with you, because by using their name, that shows you value their opinion, right? Instead of saying, yeah, that's a great point, you could change to Jack, that's a really great idea that you've mentioned. So you're being complimentary before you lay that sucker punch and let them know that actually your point's rubbish. Mine's better. Okay, so make sure you're still being polite. Don't be rude. Don't talk over each other because those things will definitely count against you. But you've got to remember, they want to see how you are as part of a team situation because that may come up as part of work. And in work meetings, we're not really rude or talking over each other. So you don't want to show off a, a nasty side to you at all. So the next thing I'm going to talk about is probably the worst kept secret. You can find this anywhere online and that is timekeeping. Now, in these exercises, you're given about half an hour to 45 minutes to complete. And the worst thing you guys can do as a group is not come to a conclusion, not come to a decision. That will look bad for everyone. So if you're in the group early on, maybe in the first couple of minutes, offer to keep time because that will definitely look good. And I don't mean you just keep time because remember, go back to my earlier point. You have to talk uh, regularly throughout the task as well and also add value to what others are saying. Okay, but if you are the person who keeps time and ensures that the group deliver the task on time, you will definitely look good. Okay, and the ways you can do that is if you see the group dwelling on a particular idea for too long, you could say, in the interest of time, guys, I think we've discussed this point enough, we should move on. And that will look good. So the next skill or tip I'm going to talk about is probably the most risky. And that is thinking outside the box. Don't be confined just to the information that you're given in that scenario. Most people fall for that trap. You can bring your research about the firm in. You can talk about the market, right? Information you're not given in that scenario. That will definitely help. So an example I'll give you is say you're given um, the business uh, group exercise, which I mentioned where you're at an accounting firm and you have to recommend um, certain services that will help increase bottom line. And you'll probably go for consulting, analytics, um, to drive down costs, to improve the bottom line. But one way you can think about it is by improving the bottom line, you're maximizing the return to shareholders. And the shareholders may want a big payday. So you could enact a merger. And what services can you provide then? Corporate finance, mergers and acquisitions. And there's big fees involved in that. So instead of talking about corporate finance, or analytics, which will come up anyway as part of the exercise, right? I'm not saying avoid those, but you could add value by thinking outside the box and suggesting corporate finance, right? That will maximize the return to the shareholders. So you can see how thinking outside the box will help you stand apart from others. Another reason why research is so important. Imagine you go in there not knowing fully about EY service lines. You've applied for audit, you know everything about audit, but you don't know about consulting. You don't know about tax. You will struggle in a group exercise like that. So it comes back to uh, a point I say again and again in my videos. Make sure you do your research because it will not only come up in the partner interview, but it may also help and come up in the other exercises as well. And that's how you can stand apart from others. Another thing to be aware of is that you may be given a lot of information to review. Say if it's 10 pages long, that may take you 15 minutes. And if it's a half an hour exercise, that's half your time in just reading. You're not even discussing at this point. And that's not an effective use of your time. So you may have to delegate, right, where each person has to read a particular section. And that's fine, right? If that happens, that's fine. But make sure you skim read over the other sections. Because you don't want the task to evolve into where everyone is just talking about the pros and cons of their respective section. Because there's no value being added. There's no discussion taking place. You could have done that over email. Okay, guys, just read you this section and then email me in your comments. Right? That's not a group exercise. So by skim reading the other sections, you'll be able to add value what others are saying. So definitely remember that even if someone says to you, Fazan, you should review this section, make sure you read the other sections as well. So guys, inshallah, you found those skills and tips and my insight useful. Let me know, comment below, message me on Instagram, whether they actually helped you, made you feel a bit more comfortable going into the group exercise, knowing more about what to expect. But I do want to stress again, 
the point of don't underestimate your competition, right? And you may think, don't worry, Fazan, I'm going to go in there really strong or I'm going to go in there and be the first one to speak. But before you know it, someone may have already delegated and said, I'm going to be the leader. And someone's quickly followed them up and said, I'll manage time. And you're there like, wow, I, di I didn't even have a time to think or collate my thoughts. And you guys have already gone and done that. But don't worry, if you're quick on your feet, you can still use that to your advantage. Say if someone comes up in a group exercise and says, I'm the leader, you do this, you do that, and you do this, right? You could say that's fine. I wouldn't say argue with them for the role of leadership. Let them have it. You say that's absolutely fine. But I think it's important to remember this is a group effort. So we should all be contributing equally to the discussion around the subject matter, whatever that is. Right? That's a good way of showing actually you recognize, although there is a leader, this is still a team effort. So inshallah, that's it, guys. Let me know how it goes. You know, what sort of scenarios come up, how you found it, and whether my tips or skills actually helped you guys. And as always, please do share the channel with others. Encourage them to watch and subscribe to the channel. And if you have any questions, whether it's related to the assessment center or the industry in general, please feel free to comment below or message me on Instagram.